Welcome to the Honest Art Podcast. I'm your host, Jody King. As an artist for 20 years, instructor, speaker, author, and fellow rebel, I've worked with thousands of people around the world, from beginners to established artists, helping them create their strongest art and build a career doing what they love. So if you are ready to have a little fun while you learn about art, creativity, building a thriving art business, and living a bold, audacious life, you are in the right place. Also, if you're considering going pro in your art business, grab the PDF in the show notes on the five things they don't teach you in art school. All right, let's get messy. Hello and welcome back to the Honest Art Podcast. You guys are in for a huge, huge treat today. Uh, for today's guest, I have the incredibly talented Warwick Saint. And um, Warwick, thank you for being here. Thank you for, for joining us. You are so welcome. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> <You're> st- <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so before we dive in, uh, Warwick Saint has accomplished so much in his career. So let me just give you a well-deserved introduction. And And I even know that this introduction is not going to do you justice. Um, you're a big fucking deal. So <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> let's just, let's get, let me take a stab at it though. Okay. So I'm just going to read this. Warwick Saint is a, first of all, you are the epitome of the term artist. You are such an artist in every way, but uh, you're a painter, award-winning photographer and mixed media artist from South Africa recognized globally for your mastery and control of light. Um, And it says, Saint, reimagine the role of lighting and film shoots with adaptive techniques. So maybe we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, Warwick has shot for brands such as Nike and Puma and Diesel um, in global campaigns uh, with his unaltered images. And he has shot album, album covers for icons. We've worked with a lot of icons, uh, but Mm -hmm. shot album covers for Lady Gaga and Alicia Keys and Missy Elliott and J-Lo and Whitney Houston. Uh, I told you guys he was a big fucking deal. Um, So that's really exciting. And then in 2018, uh, I know you took a, took a little bit of a a turn and started incorporating painting and photography um, together in your work. So I'm really looking forward to learning a little bit more about that. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's such an honor to have you here. And I know that um, the folks that are listening are going to get a lot out of this um, interview and hopefully be really inspired because uh, the folks that are primarily, you know, my audience um, are artists and collectors and um, your journey Um, of success. Um, I'm sure it's had its twists and turns, but your journey I know is going to be really inspiring for all of them. Um, So let's go back to the beginning, shall we? I know you just celebrated a birthday, so happy birthday. Can we, can we say your age or no? Sure. Okay. Sure. I'm proud of of that. Yeah, go ahead. 52, 52 years old. Yeah, I've had this. I've had this lifelong goal of spending one year at every age throughout my life, and uh, so far it's going down perfectly. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so you had you when you had parents who were very creative. Um, at mm-hmm. least in the research that I was doing, your mom was a a, a model, right? Mm-hmm. Up until and, the day she died. Yeah. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. Um, and then your dad was in, had a graphic design business. Is that correct? Yeah. He was an incredibly talented airbrush artist back mm-hmm. in those days before the age of Photoshop and computers to get that smooth technique, you'd have airbrush. And he mm-hmm. was just extremely talented and, uh, and started a graphic design company in South Africa in the seventies by the name of grapple group mm-hmm. and then left, left while well, he sort of, I had, he kind of divorced my mother when I was two and lived in Paris and worked in advertising agency. And then he started another agency in um, San Francisco and London. Um, and then had this like global agency called Grapple Group 2 and then came back to South Africa in 1985, I think it was. Um, and then I would work in his graphic design agency in my school holidays uh, and even working on, on global campaigns as a 15-year-old. 
and um, wow. and then unfortunately he died in a car accident when I was seventeen. So that that put an end to that. But uh, uh, yeah, it was. I was very much like my mother was. I would say that my father was very very talented, and I had this uh, this relationship with my father that I was just in awe of his talent. But I think a lot of uh, later in life I really learned a lot of my creative creativity came from my mother, who was also very creative in her own right. Although she was a model and very much on the other side of the camera, uh, a lot of her boyfriends were photographers. So these these boyfriends would come in and out of the household throughout my childhood, each one having a different flavor of photography and uh, sort of teaching me a new thing or two. And this was back in the day where photography was really a magical, magical profession it's sort of lost a little bit of that nowadays with the age of instagram and photoshop and social media and the iphone and you know it's very been very much democratized but that but that back then it was uh you know photographers were, were magicians it was uh it was organic and you know you never knew quite what they were seeing in the camera and there was this process in a couple of days the film would come out and it was very very highly technical and very highly skilled and i was just really in awe of the lifestyle that it's enabled in terms of the travel and the excitement and also uh, the tech the technicalities and just how what a, what a great craftsman you had to be to to take a great image um right. so anyway it's changed since then but but yeah so i was very much involved in I was, I was very much growing up in a soup of creativity of course all my mother's friends were artists and actors and singers and and i grew up in johannesburg south africa so it wasn't like it was a big european international city you know, it was a small pond, but nevertheless, it, uh, it definitely influenced um, my upbringing. And it also inspired me very much so to leave South Africa as soon as I could to get overseas and to make my way in the, in, in the global, you know, globally, rather than um, uh, staying and staying in Johannesburg and, and building a career there. Right, right. You know, um, when you were talking, I was thinking about how there are so many, so many people that um, maybe don't, didn't grow up in a creative environment like you did. Um, but we're still, still called to be creative, paint or draw or music or, you know, photography, whatever it might be. Um, but, but didn't have access to that. And then therefore weren't encouraged to follow that path. In fact, this goes back to, you know, you better have a plan B, you know, all of those, all of those things. Were you ever, did the, any of that ever come up for you? Or it sounds like you were just, it, it like it, yeah. it was just being encouraged. It was, it was very much encouraged. Uh, you know, I, I have heard a lot from friends of mine. They were like, you know, I wanted to be a filmmaker. And it was like, my parents didn't think that was a job or, you know, there was just like, you have to be an accountant or a doctor or something like this. So that was never part of the conversation with me at all. It was always encouraged. Um, you know, I was encouraged as, uh, you know, I, I was painting a lot when I was at, from the age of three till about, well, actually until my father died, a lot of my, my, my grief process after my father died was, was painting. I sort of stayed at home for three months and just painted. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, yeah, it was very much encouraged and, uh, you know, all, all my peers were all making a living out of the art, the arts. And, and, uh, I just, I would never, I didn't even ever consider doing anything else other than something creative. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, this is really, really important information. Um, you may not even know it, but I work with, I gratefully work with thousands of artists all over the world. And the biggest um, challenge that most of us have is um, a mindset shift and almost like a belief system that this is, a, this is possible. This is a real job because you know, historically, it hasn't been encouraged, like what, you know, what you were just saying, you get to get a real job of um, something that's a little more stable, um, but getting over that mindset. So you're, you are living proof that, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up painting. I was, I danced. So I, I danced from the time I was three Correct. years old till, you know, for, you know, 15 years. And um, so that was my creative outlet. I never really had a desire to pick up a, a paintbrush at all. But creativity was part of it. But because I wasn't indoctrinated into that idea of, you you know, it's not a real job and all of that. I, when I started painting when I was 35, 20 years ago, uh, I had been an entrepreneur. And so uh, I just thought, well, of course I can do this. Because nobody was telling me when I was young, it's not a real thing. Right. 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 
And yep. now I get to work with so many successful artists that I know in my bones, this is, a, this is legit. You can actually make a living and have a great life. It's not like right. to your point of traveling, like just really have a beautiful life yes. doing this. So yes. um, yeah, I just, that's what came to mind when you were talking about that. And I thought, well, it's, you know, you didn't, of course you, of course you did. <laughs> you were surrounded mm -hmm. by all these people yeah. that were doing it. Um, before we got on uh, the podcast, we were talking about our birthdays and things and me being in my fifties, you being now in your fifties. Um, and you said you felt like there was Warwick Saint before 50 or 52, right. and now you're in 2.0. Do you want to yeah. explain that a little more? Y yeah, Elaborate? so sure. So, you know, I started, I started doing photography when I was 14. Um, I mean, I was exposed to it when I was two. But anyway, I started actually picking up the camera for myself when I was 14. And that, that has taken me on an incredible journey uh, for a couple of decades. Um, you know, through the through the learning in the darkroom when I was studying philosophy, I did a degree in philosophy and art history when I was at university, and that's when I had built my own darkroom and I was working in photography. And then from there, I moved to London and worked as an assistant. And then I got my first break, and then I went to New York, and you know, then I was living between Paris and New York and LA. And this is all this this this, this expansion of myself as a photographer, and I was shooting all these global campaigns and these celebrities. And of course, everyone back in South Africa was like, "Oh my God! Like, wow! Look at this! Look at this guy!" Um, and, uh, a couple of decades in, um, I felt, I started having these pangs of, um, I would say maybe a little bit of discomfort mm -hmm. in the fact that, that what I was doing was now in a way contributing to a problem rather than elevating the world. And what I mean by that is that, you know, when Photoshop came in and then the whole retouching thing came into being, and then now we are, well, I was photographing a lot of beauty campaigns and retouching these images mm -hmm. to the client specifications, creating what was actually an unattainable aspect of beauty. And, uh, that kind of didn't really sit well with me. And the reason why it didn't is because my mother being so being a model and being a very, very beautiful woman was very, very wrapped up um, in her identity as being a beautiful woman. Right. And I had, I could, I being a single child with a single mum, seeing the pain and the torment that she would go through um, as she was aging and as she, uh, had this this very complex self perception where if she if she was aging she would lose her identity and kind of get depressed and it just had an impact on me as a kid and I just I came to this point where I was but like wow I'm in this business I am you know using Photoshop I'm using this I'm trying not to use it too much but nevertheless I am actually putting images out there that is contributing to a problem that's rising right. in society. And that didn't feel good. And I was like, how do I get out of this? Um, and it wasn't only just that, it was also this other thing of like, I'm, 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 I felt more like a craftsman than an artist yeah. because, and what I mean by that is that, we, you know, I think that there's a, there's a high level of artistry and a lot of craftsmanship, but when you are shooting for somebody else's product, trying to sell something, etc., I think you're in craftsman, craftsman mode. As much right. as you want to bring all your artistry to that, it's essentially you're doing something for somebody else's purpose. And I, I felt like I had done that and I wanted to expand beyond the lens and do something and say something for myself and do something that was more meaningful to me, especially um, as I am moving into the second half of my life. I, I didn't feel that the uh, commercial photography route was going to fulfill me in the way that it did um, in my 20s and 30s. And that's when I was a bit like, okay, how, how am I going to expand beyond this? And my wife, who is an incredible human being, just like, you know, saying to you, such an incredible artist, you really just got to do the art, like just get into the art. And that's when and I made the decision in 2018 to start printing up some, some, some of my images on canvas and splashing some paint on them and, and seeing what would happen. Um, much to my discontent, I realized that 
I really didn't know how to paint very well <laughs> back in 2018. <laughs> But uh, you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, um, and, and I don't mean to interrupt, but I think that so much, so so many people think about that they're, they, at least the artists I've worked with, they want to find their style. You know, maybe they've started painting later in life. In fact, so many of the artists that I work with haven't even started painting until their 40s, 50s, some 60s, some 70s, right? 80s, right. like you, you just never know. Um, but when they're like talking about finding, you know, what their, what sets them apart, what their signature is, what it, all of that, I always say, just follow your curiosity. Mm -hmm. Just, it's really no more than that. It's in, and, and to you, and to your, like, like there will be a stirring within yourself just to do something, just start, just do yeah. that right and what i hear 100%. you say or what you said was like you had a stirring that this just wasn't fitting you anymore and so you needed to pivot isn't it wonderful to have people in our lives to see us like it's clearly your wife saw you sees you yes and so that is beautiful that she was yes. able to encourage that curiosity so so you, you threw some paint on on the uh the photography it eventually worked out for you. Yes. I mean, it's still working out and it's still a journey and I'm still, I still feel like I'm, I'm at the beginning phase of this new um, iteration of myself. Uh, but I can tell you something is that in the, in the, uh, the early days of me being in my small little studio in Topanga, Los Angeles, and printing out some these canvas prints and being like, okay, this is it. I'm going to like, you know, cha -cha -cha. and it was just so, uh, it was just really not very good. <laughs> it's so it refreshing very, to hear very, another artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, because because people, you know, they talk to me, they talk to other artists that are, you know, known for beautiful work. And it's so refreshing when an artist really tells the truth. Like, no, I had to go through some fugly art to get to what it is now. Because it's so refreshing you know, to hear you say that. Yeah, it is. I can just tell you, look, uh, there were a couple of flukes. So, you know, like, that's all cool. Um, but as I said, you've got to start somewhere, you know, you have to look, art is art is a I, I, I believe that art is really this, the, the tip of the spear when it comes to creating culture and, and human expression. I mean, it really is. It really is a hard thing to do. Yeah. And to do it well. And, uh, and I just I had a little bit of hubris, you know, I was a bit like, Oh, you know, I'm a great artist, I can, I can do this. And then I would do these paintings, and people would look at them and be like, um, even my best friend out of London, he was like, uh, he's also a huge supporter of me. And he was like, Oh, yeah, I saw that. And I was like, Oh, God, you know, that wasn't, wasn't very good. What is you know, Warwick just, doing just... with his life? Who's <laughs> gonna tell him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it just came across very poppy, you know, very pop art and color and this, you know, and I see a lot of that stuff out there and I right. kind of see why people do it because it is a little bit sort of, it's, it's a bit like pop music, you know, it's like, right. it, it's, it's nice when you first look at it, but then you get very tired of it very quickly. And I think one of the, one of the, uh, the keys to being an artist is to be able to create something that is, a, that is contemporary and intriguing and also timeless. And that is a very, very difficult thing to do. And, um, and a lot of the stuff that I was doing early in the early days wasn't bad. It was very flat, very sort mm -hmm. of designy. Um, and then, you know, as a result of, of realizing that I didn't really know what I was doing, I was like, well, actually, you know, um, having, you know, had some experience in business and and, uh, and being a photographer, et cetera, I was like, you know, I better I better get an art teacher. And yeah. I hired an art teacher to come live with me pretty much, and uh, and literally and paint with me, yeah. just in the just in there and just doing it. And then over the last few years, I've I sort of feel like I've graduated and I've, I understand how paint works, how color works, how to create depth, how to just basically how to paint. And it's a little bit different with me because I am painting on my photography. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different process. And we can certainly talk about that um, in a little bit, but, uh, but essentially, you know, I realized I had to, I had to, I had to get some help and I did. And I'm very yeah, proud of that. And, yeah. and I, I love that because um, you are, you know, it's, I think it's really easy to um, to understand that when we first start our creative journey, that you know, taking workshops, hiring a teacher, or a mentor, whatever it might be, that that's that's that seems fitting, obviously. But you were really fucking successful before 
this happen. So um, that was, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty incredible move for you to go, oh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I think I it's important. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to, in life in general, just as in my philosophy, to have a beginner's mind. Absolutely. And to just to just realize that, you know, there's so much we know and there's a lot we don't know and there's a lot more that we don't know that we don't know. Right. And, um, uh, you know, having that learner's beginner's mind. I mean, I, I, you know, this year, I well, actually, I was going to say this year, it's only 2024, but in 2023, I was like, you know what? I need to express myself musically. What am I going to do? And I, learned, I taught myself how to DJ. You know, I always <laughs> want to be learning something new because what I'm finding is that my, my, my DJing is actually affecting my art now, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of mm. the way I'm mixing beats is the kind of the way I mix photography and paint. And there's these kind of these, these cross things that happen in the brain. Uh, like you yeah. were talking about, you were dancing for 15 years. I'm sure right. that has absolutely influenced the way you paint. It is. I, the, I, uh, that, that's a good point. I had not put that together, Warwick, but you're absolutely right. I, um, I'd love to paint on larger canvases. It doesn't have, even have to be big, but I can't paint because I want the physicality of it. I, I, yeah, I, I second that. I was a, a, a very seriously into Shaolin Kung Fu from the age of oh. 12 to about 24. Um, I was training nine times a week and it was six o'clock wow. in the morning. And again, at the end of the day, it was Sun and Shaolin and Wing Chun and, and the tiger, the tiger form and the crane and all these beautiful forms that I was, I was learning from. Um, a lineage from 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 um, China, and uh, and that influenced me a lot in terms of my photography, because all of a sudden when I was starting to shoot fashion, I was shooting movement, and that's when Nike and Puma saw my fashion stories, and they're like, "We want you to shoot the next, you know, Global Olympics campaign and the World Cup," because I was able to direct and shoot movement, like it just came naturally to me, and as a result of so that you know that that was an example of how one form of, of expression can influence another form of expression. Right. And of course now with paintings, I mean, you know, my paintings, a lot of them are eight feet high and I'm just like, well, I don't know who's going to, he's going to buy this a lot of, a lot of wall space to, to ask someone to, to take, you know, to take up. But, but, um, but yeah, the, the, even in the painting, it's very physical. It's very expressive. I want to be able to move around. I want to be able to express myself through my body. And uh, right. I, so I, I, I hear, I totally hear what you say. And, yeah. So I, I had, I coined this term, um, year ago, like 2017, actually kind of close to when you were, you're changing your, uh, mediums. Um, and it's called honest art. Uh, and the reason I, it, it even happened was artists were reaching out to me as, because I paint mostly, not all, but mostly an abstract expression of them. And so artists would reach out to me and say, how do you know when it's finished? I mean, how do you know? And I had to determine that for myself once I was asked that question. And uh, I said, and I still stand by this, for me, every artist is different, obviously, but for me, I know when it's finished, when I can look at it and say, was that honest? Was, mm -hmm. I, was I in my body, in the moment, creating something that just flowed, you know, and I wasn't trying to make it look like another artist's work or not be, you know, we're always influenced by other artists, but I wasn't trying to make it look like somebody else's anything. It was completely honest. Then right. the second thing was, uh, would I hang it in my own home forever? <laughs> not for a week, <laughs> but to your point, timeless, right? Would it, would mm -hmm. I, do I believe it's timeless and, and was it honest? So, when you were just talking about how you're changing and the style that you're doing and your huge paintings, the physicality, the whole thing, this, this to me, you know, describes that. Do you feel like what you do now is the most honest so far? Or would you, you know, tell me how, how you feel like that honest art. Yeah. Is part this of is a great, great question and a wonderful inquiry. Um, I would say, up until this point, yes, would be the answer to that. It does feel it does feel the most honest expression of where I'm at, and I feel it's going to get even more honest as I get more well versed in this new form of art that I'm exploring for sure. So, yes, the, is the simple answer to that question. Um, and then also in terms of just reiterating, when you say, "How do you know when a painting's finished?" Uh, for me, it's like 
Well, I love this. There's a saying out there in the art world. It's like, you never actually finish a painting. You just decide when to abandon it. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of love that because it's like, you know, there's always something more you could kind of do. Um, but for me, I, I realize I'm finished when I realize that anything more I could do would, wouldn't actually improve the painting anymore. Right. It's That's like, so actually, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of at the point where anything else is just, it's just for the sake of it and not actually moving the image forward. And when I get to that point, then I, then I, I let it go. And then of course I'll look at it two months later. I'm like, I could have taken that further. So <laughs> right. this is a, this is, right. this is a slight like being an artist, right? It's just, you've got to keep that self, self inquiry and that curiosity. It's, it's, it's got to keep it alive. Absolutely. Absolutely. So <laughs> tell me what, tell us about your process now. Well, um, so as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I, I've been learning to paint over the last five years or, or learning to paint properly. Um, so I'm really, I do lean into the photography a lot. It's what I'm well versed in. Uh, so now, you know, when I started doing it, I was, I was taking images that I'd shot of celebrity or a cover and kind of like painting on it and kind of seeing what, what it would do now when I'm working for a, for a particular piece of work and I'm working on a, on a, on a solo show at the moment, which is all really about the inquiry into self perceptions of beauty and, and, uh, commentary on, on humanity, et cetera, wow. is I, I shoot for the paintings now so it's a very different way of approaching my photography because sure. when i would be shooting a celebrity i would maybe shoot them at a slightly higher angle so we don't get you know a wide chin or see the double chin or anything like that certain aspects and, and lenses i would use to to create a beautiful image and uh but i realized that that actually doesn't lend itself to really interesting painting and mm. in fact um you know my angles are much more severe uh, there's a lot more um, looseness in the way that I, I shoot. Um, I am being a lot more aware of the joints of the body, like the shoulder bones, the collar bones, the hips. These are really interesting places uh, where where paint and photography can work in terms of the human form. Right. Um, and so anyway, so I'm working on the series. I would go into the studio. I would prepare a photo shoot like I would normally do. A little looser, uh, not as refined and definitive because this is only part of the process. Um, and uh, lately I've been doing what I call these body stacks. There's a few examples of them on my website. So it's like two or three people on a, on a, on a pedestal and I get them moving around and um, you know, I get a lot of touch and a lot of like holding and skin and just where this, where the, the, the fingers depress into the into the skin to really feel the sense of skin and light it in, in that way that it's very three dimensional. Yeah. So I'm lighting it very three dimensionally, and then it's almost like sculpture. It's like it's like kind of right. creating a sculpture. This is but exactly then photographing what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, when you said that, I was like, it's like this is it's like he's creating sculpture. Yeah, and and a lot of a lot of the a lot of my references, I'm looking at Rodin, I'm looking at these marble sculptures, I'm looking at the classics. And being like, what is what makes us so good? You know, what is it? And trying to recreate that in the studio. So in the studio, I have this, this, uh, you know, I'm very much in my photographer mode, and I have a team, and I'm, there's a, there's this relationship that's happening in the studio. There's this um, interaction, shall we say, this dance that's that's happening between myself being the photographer and my subjects. They are influencing me in some way. I'm influencing them in a lot of ways, and there's this beautiful dance. And uh, so once I once I've done the shoot. I, I would, you know, look at all the images and then start layering them on top of each other in Photoshop. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a huge avid uh, of like Photoshop retouching. So right. there's no actual skin retouching happening here, yeah. but there's a lot of layering. And what the layering does uh, is it, it creates complexity and um, you get, a, you get these accidents that happen or should we say these these accidents that you're guiding to happen, where maybe there's two faces over each other, or maybe there's an arm coming out of a weird part of the body, and this is this this kind of deformity that happens that can actually push into the grotesque. And uh, this is an interesting part of the process. It's actually very time consuming, because what it does is it allows me when I'm when I printed the the the, the, the photograph on the canvas, and I call this my lumiscape, is the mm -hmm. now the canvas of which I paint. It allows me to then explore these complexities with the paintbrush and either destroy it destroy it because every time i'm i'm, I'm painting on a photograph it, it you're destroying the, the image sure, and sure. um 
and it's an it's an interesting. I mean, there's a lot of relationship that's, that's happening because you have the relationship in the studio between me and my subject. Now I'm in the studio in the, my art studio with the result of this photo shoot, this relationship that I've ex experienced, and I have this result of this. Now looking back at me, this image is now looking back at me, right. and now I'm coming at it with a completely different medium. Right, and it's the oldest medium known to man. If you yeah. think about it, it's the first rock paintings from ancient, like seventy thousand years ago. So it's this this beautiful combination of the relationship of photography and technology and Photoshop, and now coming at it with like brushstroke and the immediacy right. and the kineticness of a real human being applying, a, a, you know, having an action, and that action being recorded as paint on canvas. But yet right. that is happening on an image that is looking back at me. So it's this it's this very weird kind of like thing because I'm not looking at a blank canvas. I'm looking at yeah. an image, a yeah. pretty complex image that, I, that I'm, I'm deciding to either simplify, to take away, to enhance, to then to start abstracting. And through the process of this, um, I find that um, the content, new content emerges. It's through this dance between myself in my – full present body and I have to be in prime state to really approach um, these images in a way that I think is going to yield good and interesting results. Right. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so it's just, it's a very about, interesting process. Are you ever concerned, concerned about what? Um, the reason I'm asking this is I have done some mixed media work. I really love using old images of various things and creating a mix, mixed media pieces with, you know, blowing up the images using uh, that. And, but I have this concern when I, when I do approach it, like I could completely ruin this. And, and it's not like a regular, you know, it's not, it's not, if I'm just using paint, then it's, it's easier to manipulate this and kind of recover, but it's not as easy to recover when I've got as an image that I don't want to ruin. Right. So that's why yeah. I'm saying, is there ever any concern for you or do you just build that? You've already built up that. Um, the concern is courage, always courage muscle. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Well, well, both and there's always concern. Uh, yeah. When I'm, when I do it, I'd normally print out a few test pieces that are slightly okay. smaller just to yeah. kind of get the feel of it, just to kind of see, because yeah. I don't know where it's going to end up. Right. I have an idea and I'm very much committed to the process. So yeah. I just keep coming back to the yes. process and trust in the process and yes. find the process. Don't be attached to the outcome necessarily, because if you get attached Stay to the outcome, louder then for you the will people scrub. in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just the process. It's just really dirty to show up for the process again and again and again. And um, so, yes, I, I am concerned because this, the summer, well, I want to say the summer of 2023, I went up to my studio in Montana and I had these incredible lumiscapes and they're eight feet high. And I'm just like, Oh my God, these are going to be great. And I worked on them for like four weeks. And after four weeks, I looked at it and I was like, uh, it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. And I, I went through this like grief of like losing a, losing this creation because I was just like, my God, this is actually, I can't show this. I'm not, I will, I will not stand by this piece. And that's, that's hard. It's a that's hard really lesson. Hard. And, and then, and then I did it again and I lost another one. I was like, this is not good enough. Like, man, like, and then I had to go back and I'm like, what made these pieces so good and these pieces not as good? So I had to then go back to the beginning. I'm like, well, actually this, I was using more perspective. I, you know, the, 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 the it wasn't as complex. I got too complex. There was more depth, blah, blah, blah. And then sort of revisited. So, you know, we have to go through these failures Absolutely. and I wouldn't say failure. You either learn or you win. Absolutely. And those are, those were big learning, learning curves. So yes, to answer your question, I am concerned about uh, messing it up, and uh, and it's. It, but I, I I have to override that concern because if I'm too finicky and too tentative, then I won't produce great right. work. So it's right. it's really like on the razor's edge of getting into prime state and um and uh, and being able to 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 be willing to lose a to to lose four weeks of work if yeah. if. That is what was required. Oh man, that is rough. That is a hard <laughs> lesson. That is a really hard lesson, but clearly an important one. It's, it's the, that's where the that's where the gold is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's where that's where the gold is because the next one was so good. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I um, like it. Put it that way. 
that's all that matters. Um, all right. Can we just switch gears just a bit? Um, because my audience, like I said, so many of them are artists and, um, and, and I think you're, whatever your answer to this question is going to be incredibly valuable. And I'm dealing with this right now, by the way. Uh, and that is the balance between running a, a business, right? Because we are artists, but we are running a business. This is our livelihood. It's kind of no joke, right? So, uh, and then the more, the more success we have, it just seems like it's a little bit, a little bit more uh, pressure, a little bit harder. The, the business grows. There's, you know, there's more time that's taking away from being an artist. So, uh, I haven't figured it out yet. I just feel like every time I figure it out, I have to revamp it. And, and in fact, you know, Amy is who is the executive producer of this podcast. Uh, I talked to her yesterday and said, it's not working right now. I just like, I, mm -hmm. I have no room, like I don't have the white space, the room for creativity or anything. So I always, mm -hmm. I'm always revisiting it. But so my question to you is, you know, how have you um, been able to manage this? The bills. <laughs> yeah. Well, manage well, the balance of this, you know, business, yeah. the business hat and the creative hat. Yeah. I mean, I would say, it's a, it's a great question. And I don't think I've actually figured it out yet, to be quite honest. I, I, I come from a slightly different um, uh, background in terms of that I had a successful photographic career. So I was able right. to put some money aside and make some investments. And, um, you know, I'm using the money from those investments to to fund the, 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 the transition from right. my commercial photography background to becoming a fully fledged artist, which I would say has now happened. Uh, uh, that being said, um, you know, any, I, I know a lot of great entrepreneurs and every entrepreneur that I know, even, even if they're selling toilet paper, uh, is, um, creative in the way that they approach right. a business. So, you, so the same creativity that you're approaching a work of art, like think of your business as an, actually a work of art yeah. in a way, like that's how I would say. So for, for, for me, uh, one of the things that, um, you know, I've, I mean, I've sold a few paintings for a handsome amount of money already, um, and I could obviously do with selling a lot more, but we, uh, I, I've sort of teamed up with my wife to do another vertical um, in terms of the art, and that is something we do together called Love Saints, because our surname is Saint, and, right. and uh, I, my, 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 ultimate, my ultimate goal in life is to elevate the world through art and beauty and love and um, and, and, you know, tell new stories around love. Um, so uh, we, we get commissioned by high net worth couples to turn their love story into the visual medium. And it's a very, very, very unique and bespoke um, service, an act of love and a sacred service that we do. Uh, and what that entails is that um, they, they would commission us you know, Ariel is my wife is very much part of this process. She's also an artist in her own right. It's very important that the male and female is present in the right. room. And the couple, we would talk to the couple and she's a, she used to be a relationship coach and teacher. So she kind of gets the love embodied in them. And it could be anything. They could be naked in bed or they could be walking on the beach, holding hands, whatever is uh, for them is the, um, the, 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 but however they feel the most comfortable expressing their love for each right. other. So I, then I I've, I've, I've shoot this, this process and then take it through my process of yeah. abstraction and painting. And the, what they end up with is a bespoke sort of contemporary painting that can hang in their living room or their bedroom, which is beautiful to look at. And yet the essence of their love is infused directly into the painting through the photography. And uh, so this is something we do, and it's very much word of mouth because it's we, got, we don't really show the work. Um, uh, but you know we've done Sergey Brin from Google, um, Kimball Musk, uh, you know a lot of the investors of SpaceX and PayPal and all yeah. these guys. And and this is how um, I'm sort of um, you know getting getting commissions because it's a very right. specific very specific thing. And and well, it's and, and and. and yeah, so sorry to answer your question is like, how, what do you, what can you find that adds value? That would, that's what I would say to your audience is like, what is your special something, your special source that adds value to someone's life? And, and when you meet someone, don't think, what can I get from this person? You think, how can I add value to this person's life? How can I be of service? How can I do that? And if you have that inquiry, then you actually might find that, that, that thread that can, that can help you in terms of the business, because ultimately any great business, you're adding value to the world.
Absolutely. So I, thank you. And I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, one of the things that I mention, um, or, or I, I coach mentor people on is especially artists is various revenue streams, you know, don't you bring, think of, to your point, you know, commissions are an amazing way to may not be our favorite thing because it's, you know, there is a little bit of constraint and commissions that we wouldn't have if we're just creating solely for ourselves. Um, but it's a great revenue stream. So they're, you know, mm -hmm. having various ways of making money um, and income, I think is super important. And, and I always bring it back to, if you look at other industries out there um, at anything from Starbucks to just a restaurant, whatever it might be, th there's not just one thing they offer. There's always a variety of things. And I think that as artists, if we can adapt that um, mentality, it's like we don't, it's yeah. not like we're selling out. We're just, you know. You know, I think it's a spectrum. Um, I was, uh, I went into to a studio visit in Miami in February to visit this artist by the name of Romero Brito. I don't know if you know who he is. I didn't, I, I did not know call. who he is, but you will now when you look at him. But he is the epitome of the commercial artist. I mean, unbelievable. He is the most licensed artist in the history of the world. Wow. He's been doing license for Disney, Burger King, McDonald's. When I mean, the guy's got his own jet and like a 60,000 square foot studio with a full-time staff of 75 people, just cranking out this fun, colorful, Love. you know, every airport you go to in the United States, his sculpture will be there. And like, it's just, you see, you see it everywhere. He's got luggage lines products like it's just i was like wow so it's interesting to to look at different artists and have these examples yes. of you know if you can see it if you can see it then you can believe it then you can do it right absolutely and um and i, I had a, a a conversation with a with a a very very successful businessman and friend of mine back in 2018 and i was a bit like how how do like how do i scale and i was i, I was i was a photographer at the time and he was like you're asking you're asking the wrong um, question. The question is, um, how can you, I, I can't remember exactly how the conversation went, but essentially what came from it was look at examples of artists that have scaled. Yes. And, you know, and uh, what comes to mind, I'm like, well, Andy Warhol, you know, blah, 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 Romero Brito, etc. cetera. So you, I think it's important for artists when they, when they're on this inquiry is to find examples of what has, of what has worked and just to, you know, you're going to get influenced by that. And it's not that I want to necessarily go the Romero Brito route, but it was very, very, very impressive to see what an, what an empire he's built. Yes. Um, so. And, and yeah, yeah. And I think, I think what you said as part of this is, you know, if, if, if people walk away with nothing else from this, I hope that they're, we're not closing this by the way, but I hope they walk away with being inspired by you and your story and the, the, the stories that you're telling about other artists, because what you said is when you see it, you can believe it, you believe it, and then you can do it, right? When you see it, mm -hmm. but if you never see it done, we don't believe it's possible, right, mm -hmm. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when I say see it, I don't, you, you know, you can see it in the real world or you can just see it in your, in your own, you know, in terms of your own visioning, right. your own Thing. It's like you've got to be able to like experience it in your in your mind as well. So that's yes. that's like taking it even further. So yes. you know that's that's you know, look. We, I, I'm a great believer in learning. I'm a great believer in being a, a learner throughout my whole life. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing information, a lot of mentors, a lot of teachers out there. And I want to just you know learn as much as I can on this journey. And um, and you know certainly artist visits, looking at different artists reaching out to different artists would very much help a young budding artist to kind of figure out their path and figure out their way. So yeah. I would definitely, uh, definitely encourage that. Amazing. Okay. Before we, before we go, we have a tradition on the podcast where um, a previous artist will leave a question for the next guest. And uh, so the question that was left for you, well, they didn't know who it was for, but it is it, it comes down to you is uh, just what is your biggest challenge as an artist? I would say, I mean, uh, yeah, the way to well start and <laughs> right. there's a lot of challenges, which, which is the big, which is, a, which is the biggest one here. 
Um, well, let me just let me just uh, that me just, that in uh, itself could be the answer. <laughs> I would say, look, uh, you know, an artist without an audience is a bit like, you know, running a play in an empty theater, right? So we need an audience. We have to have eyeballs on the work. And I think it's really uh, hard and challenging to make sure you are creating work for yourself and not for your audience. Yes. As much as you want to do that because you want an audience, it's not actually what the audience wants. So... I think it's, you know, it's, it's, look, there's only one of me and there's only one of each of you out there. So the more you can be true to yourself and be in your body and be as you, as you can possibly be and express that as honestly and as wholeheartedly and as clearly as you can, you have a much better chance of creating something that is unique because you are unique. And art is the ultimate form of human expression. So express yourself and make sure that it is you that you're expressing and not doing it for an audience. And this is something that I learned, of course, as a, as a photographer, because I'm doing something for a record label or for this audience or that audience. And now I can pull it all back in as like, what do I want to say? What do I want to say for myself? What is going to impact and be more meaningful to me? And, um, and I think that is the constant inquiry and the constant challenge of uh, when you're showing up for your process in the studio is to really be cognizant of that. And uh, I think you have a better chance of creating great art. And um, yeah, there's a great saying, actually. The, sorry, keep going. No, I want to hear the saying. I was, I was going to say I oh, couldn't agree more, but go ahead. What's yeah. the saying? Well, there's a saying, I think Pablo Picasso said this or some great, it's like a great art is the collaboration between God and man. And the more man gets out of his own way, the better the art. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So. I, that get, reminds me of, there's also a saying I was, I was telling your friend last night um, who is not at all in uh, an artist and art, you know, he, he doesn't even consider himself cre creative as most people who are in, like engineers and stuff don't. But um, I said, the thing about, uh, about, being an artist is that there's a saying, no artist creates alone. And the more I'm able to collaborate with spirit, universe, you know, whatever, the source of all creativity, the, the, the more I'm able to get out of the way and collaborate, the better yeah. the art's going to be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting kind of like a paradox, really, because I'm saying, you know, you got to be more you and more you. And then I'm saying, well, you got to get out of the way. And it's like, yeah. well, you want all the parts that don't serve you to get out of the way. Right. You want to be as connected to spirit or connected to that channel. I mean, art. there's a great book, actually, that is well worth it. It's called The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. Yes, I have. I don't know if you've read it, right but it's like, it's it. kind of like my Bible. I mean, it's just like this guy is like, just, it's unbelievable what he's written about art. And I'm just like looking at this and I'm just like, wow, like you really are like saying. He's saying, the Yoda, like, the Yoda of the, Yoda. the art totally. world, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of really good juice in that and how he um, elevates the, 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 the concept and what artists do in the world and how much of a practice it is and how important it is. It's very, very important. And I think it's, it's, it's a very noble and important profession. I think it's especially important now with the, with the incoming of AI and yes. what, how that's going to affect everything. Yeah. And uh, I think as we move into the future, my hope is that with all this technology, that the, um, the, 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 the true sense of human expression and humanity becomes more valuable. Absolutely. And that is my hope. And I think artists have to hold that, um, hold that, uh, that flame and burn it bright to uh, distinguish ourselves from AI. Yeah. I think that is the perfect way to, to close this out. That's, that's such a beautiful expression and sentiment. And I, I, I agree. I think our, the work that we do in the world is invaluable. Um, so where is the solo show going to be? You know that is that? a, it'll be, it'll probably happen in Miami. Um, okay. Uh, because of my, my two big failures over the summer last year, I sort of got pushed back, <laughs> pushed back a couple of months because I'm just like, oh, I don't quite have all the work already. Um, but, uh, 
But uh, anyway, I, I fly back to Miami on Sunday. Um, I'm moving into a new studio space and then uh, probably going to be working on it through the summer. So we're looking at spring of 2025. Right. Uh, as much as so I wanted to do people... in the fall of 2024, but yeah, right. I think, uh, you know, you get one chance to make that, that sort of show rock and, and um, uh, there's, there's still a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel that. Um, so it, how would people, how would people stay in touch with what you're up to? Is it, so, would it be website, social media? What would be the best? Um, Instagram is good. Yeah. Instagram it's at Warwick Saint, W-A-R-W-I-C-K-S for sugar. A I N T, and also my website, uh, warwicksaint.com. Those are the, the probably the two best uh, ways. Is that you can sign up for the newsletter um, and uh, just be in touch via that. Uh, and uh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you, simple. sir, for your time. It was just a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I'm inspired, and uh, I know everyone else will be as well. So thank you. Much love. Appreciate, appreciate you, Jody. Thank you. It has been a wonderful conversation. I've really enjoyed it. So I often get asked, what's the number one thing that has made the biggest difference in my creativity and abundant life? And without a doubt, my answer is always meditation. It helps me to feel present and to feel grounded, which is essential for me as an artist and really for anyone to be able to get into that creative zone. So that's why I created a free meditation for anyone looking to get centered and to experience more abundance in their life. If this sounds like something you'd be into, you can find it at the link in the show notes.